guys, Lem here. Welcome back to another art video. Today I am doing an art product review. And as you can see here, I have taken apart all of the products already and put them into different glasses here. So what I am going to be reviewing is the Sakura Jelly Roll pen. And there are many different kinds of jelly rolls. So there is, I'm gonna try to just look from the tops. These are classic jelly rolls. I saved the little um, inserts so that I can just pull them out and show you. And I also took pictures of the products before I took them apart so you can see what they look like in their packaging. And I will also go back and read the original packaging to you. Um, but at the beginning of this video, that's already been taken apart, so we're just gonna kind of backtrack after here. These are metallic jelly rolls. These are glaze. These are souffle. And finally, we have the moonlight jelly rolls. So a little bit something to consider before we get into this is that the souffle and the glaze are special. So they're different from the metallic, the original, and the moonlight because these actually rise over time. So it's not going to be flat on the surface when you draw. It's going to kind of raise up so that when you put your finger down, you'll be able to feel the effects. And there are different surfaces where souffles and glaze work better. So I'm an artist and I work on paper. So um, I tried out the glaze and the souffle on normal paper, which is a more porous surface, which is not what they're supposed to be used on, but they do look very nice. They're just not raised like the effect um, that they advertise. What they say is that they should, that you should use it on, whoops, harder surfaces. So I have a box right here and I put it uh, to smiley faces and I can like feel it. It's like really nice and it feels really cool. So glaze and souffle, I would say like use for your sketchbook covers and if you want that raised effect, but you're not going to really get that on paper because it's going to be too porous. So I'm going to get into reading off the descriptions of each kind of jelly roll that I have here and I will be showing you pictures of them in their packaging while I do so. And then we will get started on actually making pictures with all these different kinds of jelly rolls. And I specifically wanted to do this video with you guys because on YouTube, I see so many people using the white Sakura jelly roll and nothing else. But all of these pens are so cool in so many different ways that I thought doing a comparison video would be really neat to show you guys what's out there and how nice they look on different colored papers, not just white. So I have a sample of black, I have a sample of brown, I have a sample of white paper to show you what they look like on the different colors, colored papers rather. All right, so let's get started. First up, we have classic jelly rolls, and they say these are archival quality ink, and it is waterproof, chemical resistant, fade resistant, bleed free, quick drying, and pH neutral. I have two different sets here. There's a 0.4 millimeter medium line set that has 10 pens and 0.3 millimeter um, fine line pens, and there are five in that set. So these are classic, these are kind of the old school jelly rolls that you think of when you think of jelly roll. Next up we have metallic jelly rolls. So they say that this is creamy smooth ink and it writes on matte or glossy surfaces and says always test product before applying, archival quality ink is waterproof, chemical and fade resistant, bleed free and pH neutral. I have two different sets and there are both 0.4 millimeter medium line sets. Uh, one set has 10, one set has five. The set of five has darker colors than the set of 10. Uh, it says that it is opaque ink and it writes on dark paper. So 
as the title of the jelly roll says, it's metallic. So it's going to kind of look like metal and it's going to be kind of shiny. So that's cool. And we're going to move on to the next one. Next up is the Moonlight Jelly Roll. And I have two different sets. One is a 0.5 millimeter and the other is a 0.3 millimeter. Both sets have 10 pens within them. And it says here that opaque luminous gel ink. It is vivid, intense opaque ink colors. Works like a paint pen on colored papers, vellum, and photographs. Always test product before applying. Now it says the red, rose, purple, green, and blue colors are archival quality ink. It's waterproof, chemical resistant, fade resistant, bleed free, quick drying, and pH neutral. And then it says the fluorescent yellow, fluorescent pink, fluorescent green, fluorescent vermilion, fluorescent orange. And it says that those colors are fluorescent colors that glow under black light. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and it says paint like effect, writes on dark paper. And yeah, so it comes in a nice 0.3 millimeter. That's pretty, pretty fine. So that's nice. And then we have the bolder 0.5. Up next, we have two different sets of glaze. Now these glaze jelly rolls um, each have 10 pens in each set and you can clearly see they are different colors. And I'm going to read a little bit about them. It says that they are glossy 3D colors, add shine and texture. Um, works on plastic, coated paper, glass, and metal. So you really want a non-porous surface. Uh, apply slowly to let the ink flow thickly. Allow five to 10 minutes drying time. 3D effect works best on non-porous surfaces. Set includes opaque white, and then it says 850, I guess that's the number, and clear gloss, 800, for dimension without color. So what they mean by 3D is that once you apply this ink, if it is on a hard surface like glass or plastic or something like that, then the ink will actually raise up and create a texture that you can feel when you run your hands across it. And these are glazed, so they are glossy and pretty. Um, and uh, yeah, I have tried these on paper. They don't raise up nearly as much on paper, but they still are glossy and pretty. So moving on. Okay, last but not least is the 10 set of souffle pens that we have. It says stands out on dark surfaces. Now these look like very pastel colors and it says it works on plastic, coated paper, glass, or metal. Apply slowly to let the ink flow thickly, allow five to 10 minutes drying time. 3D effect works best on non-porous surfaces. So this is exactly like the glaze, but it's not shiny or glossy. It will raise over time. And when you first apply it onto the paper, it won't look the color that it turns out to be. Like if you put the white down after a while, like the five to 10 minutes, then it will become a white, so. That is the final jelly roll that we have. And I'm going to show you what experimenting I've done with these pens. So, moving onward. So as the instructions have told us, certain jelly rolls work better on certain colored surfaces or certain kinds of surfaces. But for this review, because I'm an artist and I do fine art, we're going to use all the jelly rolls on paper, which means that the glaze and the souffle won't be rising and getting that texture that they are known for and what you should be using them for. They still look very nice, but they aren't raised. And that doesn't really bother me because I'm mostly about the way it looks, not the way it feels. So <laughs> everything is on paper. And because some of the jelly rolls are said to work on 
darker paper or look better on darker paper, I've put together this little kind of swatch pad. So I have white paper, black paper, and I also have a brown toned paper. So you can see what all the different jelly rolls look like on all the different colored papers that I have here. Now, with that being said, it, you know, it looks different when you color on top of these papers and then use the jelly rolls. So I'm going to show you three different speed paints on different colored papers, which is why this review has been taking me so long. <laughs> so you can see what the jelly rolls kind of look like in action. So let's get started. So this first picture that we're seeing here is on white watercolor paper. And you might recognize this from when I did my review of Koi's watercolors, the field pocket sketch travel set, I believe it was, of 24 colors or something like that. And what I did was I mostly did the painting and then I went and I decided to add all the details with jelly rolls so that I could utilize the same picture in two different videos and show off the strengths of both products that I had available. So I did all the line art. I did a colored line art, which I have a tutorial on if you want to check that out in my, my YouTube videos, but I did a colored almost rainbow line art. It was more subdued because I didn't want to bring too much attention to the actual line art as much as just the picture as a whole looks nice. So I mostly used classic jelly rolls in this picture and I did use souffle because they are more pastel and the character Wynne has very pastel like hair color and like very pale skin and I wanted to use the souffle for that. But I also used moonlight to add glowy effects in the background but mostly what I used was classic. So you'll see like a lot of the darker colors are the classic colors. I didn't use glaze in this one because I didn't feel it was appropriate. Um, what I really like about the jelly roll is that it maintains its color. So whether you're putting it on the different color surface or not doesn't matter so much because if you put the white down it's always going to be white if you put the blue down it's always going to be blue now whether you can see it more easily or not is a totally different thing but it always has the integrity of the color intact so for example this character ha has a lot of green in her hair, but also green in the background because it was lots of flowers in this picture. And I decided to add details with a jelly roll so I can add additional flowers on top of the watercolor paint. Now, red and green are opposing colors on the color wheel. So you're supposed to be able to make a brown if you combine them and it makes a muddy, gross color. But if you take the red jelly roll, like what I did, and you go over the green, you won't see any of the green and it still looks like a red color. So it's opaque, it doesn't show through and the color doesn't spoil. So I really like that and I use that to my advantage in this picture specifically when adding a whole bunch of different flowers to the background. So basically when using the classic jelly rolls because they were a bit darker than the other options I had, I made sure that I put them on top of lighter colors. But when using other colors such as souffle or moonlight, I would make sure that I would put them on darker colors because I wanted all the jelly rolls to pop out. So you have to kind of take into consideration the strength like the strengths of each jelly roll and where it would look best when you place it. Because if you take a really pale color and put it on top of another pale color, you just simply won't really be able to see it as well as if you put it on top of a darker color. So you kind of have to take that in consideration when placing your colors down if you really want them to pop out and the viewer to be able to see them. Next up is a much shorter picture where 
I decided to just show how I used a few jelly rolls to make a picture pop out. This one is the brown tone paper and I added white jelly roll and also moonlight jelly roll in pink, but it was like a fluorescent pink. So I wanted to show you how you can use jelly rolls to kind of make magic happen in a drawing where before it might not have necessarily looked like magic. Now I've already put down some color pencil in the background and you can see how bright it got, which wasn't really that bright. It was just kind of like a, it almost looked more like smoke than anything else. But once I put down the jelly roll on top of the paper because it's so opaque, it really makes the picture pop out more. So I didn't really go for as many colors in this picture as much as I wanted to show how opaque it was and how a little jelly roll will go a long way. So I just picked two simple colors for this and that's all I really needed to make a great picture. And finally, this is the one where I had the most fun with it and I I realized that I was going overboard, but I kind of wanted to do it on purpose. And that is because I had such a difficult time actually getting the picture onto black paper because the black was overpowering all the colored pencils that I had and all the paint that I had. So I knew this picture wasn't gonna come out that great just simply because I couldn't color it very well. But I figured, hey, I'll jazz it up with the jelly rolls and I'll just have a lot of fun with it. So I tried to show you which jelly roll I was using in this one by taking out the little slip and putting it down, but it became difficult because I kept uh, putting my hand on it and moving it and it was just kind of a mess, but I tried my best to show you which one I, I used. So in this one, I used metallic jelly rolls and moonlight jelly rolls. I used a few souffle and that's basically it. Now I used the glaze sparingly for certain parts so that I could make it like shinier but as you can see in the swatch pad the glaze was very dark so it just kind of disappeared a little bit into the darkness of the paper but I liked that because I could be able to just not necessarily use the clear glaze pen, but I could use colored glaze. So it would have like a little bit of a color effect, but it would also be very shiny. So I used that as well. Um, but yeah, this one, I just kind of went crazy and I was like, I'm just gonna add different patterns and textures and it's, weird from a from my standpoint because I never use this many jelly rolls in a picture ever or this much jelly roll in a picture ever and I really went out of my way in this one to just fill up the page with a jelly roll so while I don't like the picture it still looks so different and neat to me because of the jelly roll if I didn't have a jelly roll, I'd, honestly, I'd probably just throw the picture away. But because I went overboard with the jelly roll, I kind of actually like it now. So yeah, I'm just trying to show you guys which ones I used. Uh, I would have to say that out of all the colored papers to work on, black was definitely the most difficult. It was, it made certain jelly roll colors really pop out. However, it was just so difficult to color on that it was, it wasn't very enjoyable, like the jelly roll part was fun, but everything else wasn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can get a lot of different space backgrounds with like stars and different colors with the jelly rolls. So if you painted your background like really dark or like a black and then some blue to make a sky at night, you just grab a jelly roll and you go on top of it and you can see those light colors pop out and they look like stars. So there's a lot of uses for these jelly rolls that maybe not everyone has been aware of. Um, and there's lots of different colors and different types. So 
I have nothing but good things to say about these pens. I've had other gel pens before, before actually getting these jelly rolls and I hated them. They would always get stuck up and like I couldn't get the ink to come out and it wouldn't flow evenly. And then the ball like in the middle would kind of push the gel to both sides like like it was let my people go Moses parting the sea or whatever and it would just kind of like push the ink to the side and then you would see the paper underneath and then the ink on both sides so they would always just something about the application of those gel pens they just never worked for me and they were super frustrating for the longest time I never used any gel pens in my artwork and it wasn't until I purchased a classic white jelly roll that I realized like these are the best jelly roll gel pens ever. So yeah, <laughs> I haven't found any other pen that I like as much as the jelly roll and I haven't actually looked to buy any new ones because I'm just so happy with the jelly roll as it is. So. The only thing that I would think to buy is just new colors or different kinds of jelly rolls because they're just so much fun and they all have different effects. And you can use those just different effects in your artwork to create awesome pieces. So with that being said, I hope that you guys liked this review. I know it was like overwhelmingly positive, but you know, each jelly roll has its own strength, when you should use it, how you should use it, but I really like this product. I think it's just great and yeah, you can find these in probably your local craft store or even online. So yeah, I hope you guys like this review and I'll talk to you guys next week for another art video. And um, yeah, till then, take care. Bye guys.